Have you ever given a ride off the app? Do you know drivers who do? What are the risks? What are the benefits? Let's talk about it. Welcome everyone, Mark here from Uber Hints. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon up above so you know when I post new videos. In this video, we are going to talk about drivers who go a little rogue, who may offer rides on the side, off the app, for cash. What do you think? We've been kind of dancing around this issue and I have here a comment from one of our viewers. And the reason I'm using this one, it kind of encapsulates a lot of the thoughts and ideas and opinions that I've heard from many of you. As long as you have car insurance, you can take a friend to the airport. Nothing should change with the insurance. In fact, it would be even better without having Uber and Lyft involved with their crappy runaround I've heard about. I'm guessing you can make this clear with people before you drive them and maybe have a waiver agreement so they know this is just a friend driving a friend to the airport. Those are the types of comments I've heard. And I said in previous videos, well, there's a lot of things you have to be concerned about. One of the things I mentioned is nobody knows where you are or who you're with. And I got some sarcastic responses to that. Well, boy, I was going to run to the grocery store. Good thing I didn't because nobody would know where I was. Yeah, I think it's a little different when you have a stranger in the car with you that you've never met. You don't know their background, their history, who they are. I mean, we've heard about a lot of assaults and different bad things happening. Me, I kind of like to have some kind of electronic trail of who I'm with and where I'm going. But let's address the things talked about and mentioned in this commentary. As long as you have car insurance, you can take a friend to the airport. That is absolutely true. Once we get into situations, however, where it's not a friend and we're doing things for profit, we might be getting into that sticky, wicked area because now we are operating as a business. We are operating as an unlicensed carrier, taxi service, livery service, limousine service, whatever you want to call it. Different areas have different legislations, different categories. Those of you in New York, you know this is taken very seriously. If someone starts giving taxi rides, giving ride share rides without the proper licensing. So, you know, you can get in a lot of trouble in that regard. I don't know if it would affect your driver's license or not. Let me know what it's like in your area. In fact, it would be even better without Uber and Lyft involved. I'm not too sure. You can make this clear with people before you drive by signing a waiver. Okay, first of all, me, I get in a car and someone makes me sign a waiver. I, it's starting to make me nervous. It's starting to make me feel uncomfortable. I think that's going to raise people's anxiety. The moment that you start to raise the issue, something can go wrong here. People start to uh, kind of resist doing what they might do if it never crossed their mind. So I think the waiver is going to put up a barrier. Now, would the waiver even stand up in court? I kind of doubt it. If you are doing something that's illegal in the first place and running a taxi service without a license is illegal in the first place. So I don't think that that waiver would even be valid. Now, if I, even if I signed a waiver, or even if I agreed to a little wink and a nod under the table, yeah, I'm just a friend, you're driving to the airport. I think that is going to be swept off the table really fast the moment there's an accident, particularly if it's a personal injury accident. Now I'm hurt and I'm thinking, holy cow, is this guy's insurance going to cover me? I don't know who this guy is. The cops show up. I am dropping dime on that guy so fast because I want to protect myself, right? And I'm not talking about me. I'm using me as an example of, you know, the general public, the person that might get in this vehicle that's not a licensed taxi, that's not an Uber, that's not a Lyft. Quite frankly, I've never fully understood how Uber and Lyft and Rideshare get away with it in the first place. You know, the original concept of this whole thing was that I'm going from point A to point B 
you're going the same direction. I'll pick you up as I'm heading there. The whole idea was supposed to be kind of a ride share. You know, it's going to uh, save gas. It's going, because we're sharing, right? It's going to take fewer cars off the road or more cars off the road, fewer cars on the road. And it turned into something completely different. It turned into a business where people go on the road intentionally to give rides. And that's not the way it was originally envisioned, uh, if I'm understanding my Uber history correctly. So what do you think? First of all, do you think giving a ride is going to affect your insurance? I say absolutely. And if your insurance company finds out you're doing this, I think they will drop you like a hot potato. Number two, do you think signing a waiver is going to help? You heard my viewpoint, my opinion. And number three, a friend driving a friend. You know, in normal conditions, normal situations, it's not a problem. You always have to look at worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you're in an accident. Do you think that friend is going to back you and support you? Love to hear your comments down below. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Ring the bell icon up above. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Mark with Uber Hands.